this is a, a graph from uh, Washington State Energy, WSU. And real basically, and we'll go ahead and, and do this test in, in, in just a minute, what we're doing is we've got our duct blaster is a brand name, so we'll call it our duct pressurizing jig. And we've got a really big manometer right here. And what we do is we tape off all the intentional holes. And the intentional holes are the registers and grills. And we pressurize it. In this case, we pressurize it to 50. And then we see what our fan pressure is. And because we're using a smart manometer, we can then uh, <coughs> tell how many CFM. So this is the part where hopefully I will not crash my computer system. And we will, fingers crossed. We have our own world's biggest manometer. And this actually will read this manometer directly. Kind of cool. I didn't write the software, trust me. Um, what we've done here is we have two registers in the whole house because we got kind of stretched on the HVAC budget. And we've taped one off. And this is the one our pressure tap is in. And I used the foam block on this one. And this is supposed to be our you all U-Haul air handler box right here. It's green. It's a recyclable furnace. And this is lovingly called the snorkel. And it fits to the fan. And we're not going to get into the nitty gritty of how to do this. But at the center of this, we have this pressure sensing ring. So what I'm going to do here, and just keep your eye on one of the giant manometers and your fingers crossed. And we're going to see what the leakage is at This is a really common mistake when you test duct leakage, is not to connect the hoses. <laughs> Did that on purpose. So I'm going to bring this up to 25 on the left hand side. And because I've programmed this ultra smart manometer, it's going to tell us what the leakage is. So we're almost, OK. I'm not, I'm not going to argue over a couple of tenths of a Pascal here. We'll turn it down just a little bit. So roughly speaking, our duct system here has about 50 CFM at 25 Pascals. Here's the really interesting thing. I was in Idaho two weeks ago, and we saw a 2,000 square foot house that had a total of 36 CFM. And this box is actually pretty taped together. And we didn't go out of our way to make holes. So again, it's a flow rate. I'm saying when I pressurize the entire duct system to 25 pascals, it leaks 50, 52 CFM. So when we, when we talk about this code, keep that 52 number in your head, OK? So um, this is, to me, a really encouraging picture over here. And this is a serious guy, Apollo Heat out of Kennewick, Washington. Got his hard hat, on, hard, hard hat on and a safety vest. And he's going through his houses. And every house, he's got a number he's got to hit. The other picture is uh, one of David Hales on a finished house. David works for uh, Washington State University. And these are typical ways you hook up. David's hooking up to the largest return grill. And this individual is actually hooking up to the furnace cabinet itself. There's two tests that are in the new code. One is called the total test, and that's just the one we did there. Regardless of where the duct is located, whether it's in an attic, a crawl space, a garage, or the house, or between floors, or any place else, it's going to see that hole. The other test it talks about, which is sort of hard to understand until you see it a few times, is called the leakage to outdoors. <coughs> And the disadvantage of this test is you need two pieces of equipment. You need this duct tester here, and you also need a blower door. And the first time you see this test, it's a little confusing. There's like a couple manometers and tubes running all around and fans all over the place and lots of ways to mess it up. <coughs> but the way it works is you need two things for a leak. You have to have a hole, and you have to have a pressure difference. So what the blower door does 
is it pressurizes the house to 25 pascals. And if you pressurize the ducts to 25 pascals, and if you have a leaky duct inside the house, how much air will go through that hole? Zero. That's why you sit in the front of the class. <laughs> yeah, zero is the right answer. So it's, not a, it's kind of a cool trick. Uh, disadvantage, you need two pieces of equipment. And this is sort of the test shown schematically. The big difference, hopefully this is, hey, the laser, it works. So this is the blower door pressurizing the house to 50, which is the same pressure that you're going to bring the ducts. So that's how the uh, duct leakage outside test works. When you're doing a duct blaster test, and if I keep saying 50 pascals, it's because here in the Northwest, for whatever reasons, we test everything at 50 pascals and not 25. The reason that is is because we're twice as good. <laughs> no, that's not it at all. <laughs> the reason, I don't know why it is. It doesn't matter whether you do it at 25 or 50. But when you do a duct blaster test, you are getting everywhere in the duct system to your test pressure. This is really different than when the ducts are at operating condition. You might see 125 pascals right underneath the furnace on the supply side. And you might only see something like, <laughs> what's the number? Two. <laughs> You might only see two pascals. Your duct blaster doesn't care. If you got a hole this big at the boot and this big at the air handler, it will give it equal weight. In terms of saving energy and money, if you're giving direction on where to get the most exact about duct sealing, the closer you are to the fan, the more important it is to seal that hole well. Just remember, duct blasters don't care where that leak is. The energy does. So our crews had a motto, boots for show and plenums for dough. When you're trying to save money, <laughs> focus on the plenum. <laughs> You've sealed some ducks in your life, haven't you? You have that sick duck sealing sense of humor about you. I, I sense that. Uh, the further you are away, the less the pressure is. The greater the pressure, the more important is to seal that hole in a way that will last forever and not leak at all. And this is just another highly stylistic chart that again, is, this one's in inches of water column. You know, most of you are probably looking at this one, aren't you? Maybe I should move over here. What it just says is the closer you are to the fan, the higher the pressure. They give you two options. One is the post-construction test and one is at rough-in. At post-construction, they are allowed up to 8 CFM per 100 square feet at 25 pascals or one inch water column. That's leakage to outside. That's the one with the blower door. The other way to express that is 8% of the floor area. Total leakage, you're allowed to go up to 12 CFM. At the rough end test, that's before the sheetrock goes up, so we can't use a blower door. You're allowed 6 CFM, and uh, with the air handler in place, and if the air handler is not in place, you're allowed 4 CFM. Exception, if the air handler and ducts are inside the condition space, no duct leakage test is required. One of my secret hopes out of this code <laughs> is that people find duct testing so disgusting and so discouraging and so laborious that they start to put their ducts inside <laughs> so they don't have to do it. It's really a much better answer. Um, sensor ring care and feeding, this is actually what's at the center of the duct blaster. Uh, it can get damaged, it can get, some people like to use the chemical fog and it actually plugs the sensor rings and sometimes the hoses um, can also. Uh, for whatever reason, People, <clears throat> I don't know why, they like to put the rings on backwards, but they do. They're supposed to face in, not outie. The way I get people to remember that is innies, not outies. The bad news is you'll get a number. Uh, 
That was my dog chewing my pressure hose. Uh, hoses do develop leaks. Okay, so where do we put the pressure tap? I don't know. Um, I like to put it some distance away from my fan. <laughs> um, on new construction, it shouldn't matter too much in most cases because the duct system should be tight enough that it doesn't matter. However, if you put your pressure tap behind, let's just say we have a teddy bear here, or a pile of wet sawdust, or leftover deli sandwiches, or a closed damper, or it's full of water. If I put my pressure tap there, I might crank and crank and crank, and my pressure tap might not ever see anything. I think it's a good idea to go around and test the pressure in a few places. <laughs> Post-testing duct leakage happens. <laughs> um, do you guys know what plumbers call flex duct? Knee pads. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so, you know, hey, I got to put a drain here. But, you know, yeah, the one on the left was caused by somebody putting a screw through the interior liner of flex duct, which is against the manufacturer's uh, warranty advice. So obviously, if you put your pressure tap in either one of those registers, you would think you had an infinitely leaky duct system, when in reality, you just had something a plumber or electrician damaged. This company right here uses two different kinds of furnaces, and they've made a sheet metal jig that they just take off the blower door compartment, put that on, <laughs> saves about 10 minutes of futzing around with tape and cardboard. It goes pretty fast. Um, there's a partial answer to your question. <laughs> yeah, it is important to seal. Also keeps the mice out of the cupboards, which you know, is, is, is another nice thing to do. 